I give now the floor to Sri Lanka, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for giving me the floor. Mr. Chairman, if we look around the world, we will soon appreciate that rules, norms, and principles can be no more than a facilitator to achieving the goal of responsible behavior in cyberspace. We, I'm simply saying that we therefore need to go beyond just a set of rules to make the real difference. I say this because responsible behavior entails self-motivation, self-guidance by member states in their best interest and in the interest of the international community, and not for reasons of pursuing a common cause of some fashionable political alliance. We know that the program of action represents an opportunity to put forward an alternative approach to state behavior in cyberspace based on multi-stakeholderism, capacity building, and democratic norms in a bid to take it beyond the realms of the law. We must also remind ourselves of the normative framework developed by the GGEs to promote responsible state behavior in cyberspace, which is based on the four pillars of international law, the 11 voluntary norms, setting out what states should do and should not do in the, in the digital space, various confidence-building measures, in particular to strengthen transparency, predictability, and stability, and finally, of course, capacity building. Now, in order to successfully achieve these initiatives, we need to have trust in technology, because trust is a fundamental aspect of building confidence in an interconnected, digitalized world. In the absence of an internationally legally binding instrument structured upon the foundation of trust and values that governs the digital space, the development of effective rules, norms, and principles of responsible state behavior becomes that much more difficult. However, while development of rules, norms, and principles of responsible state behavior in this sector may be a positive step, Sri Lanka's position has remained steadfast that any protocol of rules developed cannot be the alternative to working towards a legally binding instrument. Mr. Chairman, it is our position that before we can develop new rules, <clears throat> we need to have a clear understanding of how existing rules and laws are applied in the digital space. We have accepted the position that international law also applies in the digital space. In the case of certain rules, such as the prohibition of violence in cyberspace, is relatively straightforward to understand. However, in the case of such rules as the rules of international humanitarian law, and this application needs greater study, I say, as to its implementation. In other words, we require greater study on what states can and can't do in the event of cyber warfare. Mr. Chairman, it is only once that we have clarified these issues it is only once that we have clarified these issues that we will be able to evaluate whether new rules are necessary. So with the adoption, as Sri Lanka is concerned, with the adoption of the Data Protection Act and the Cybersecurity Bill, Sri Lanka is focusing on creating a, a rules-based order, uh, setting the minimum standards to protect our digital infrastructure and cyber use and engagement. Sri Lanka takes cognizance of the fact that the framework is primarily about promoting interstate cooperation, respecting human rights and privacy, protecting critical infrastructure, safeguarding global supply chains, providing assistance when required, and preventing the malicious use of digital technologies on state, states' national territories. Mr. Chairman, we believe that we must work towards upholding and strengthening international law. Secondly, that member states must clarify the way in which international law should be applied in concrete terms in the digital space by examining where they stand on these issues. Mr. Chairman, by setting out and promoting its individual position, member states can help to bring greater consistency and predictability. In this way, it can also shape the international position on the digital space to reflect our individual interests. And finally, I say that it can make a tangible contribution to promoting clarity and a shared understanding of the application of international law by a regular dialogue between states. Mr. Chairman, I must mention the fact that the rule of law, just as much as it prevails 
in ordinary circumstances must also prevail in digital space. It cannot be rules of law. It must be the rule of law and nothing short of the rule of law. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador, for your statement.